Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I rise to give a short presentation and lend my voice to this debate and certainly endorse this Tourism Development Bill. I do this simply because, Mr. Speaker, I believe with every cell in my being that we are witnessing, we are seeing a team present in this house with their minister and staff, a historic team that will ensure that St. Lucia will never be the same again. I am convinced beyond conviction that with this tourism minister and his team, that what we are doing here today will ensure that every single sector in this nation is touched in a way that no other industry currently can have that same effect, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when we look at what this government has done, there is a clear strategy that any young individual in any community can gravitate towards and understand that there is an opportunity for you. Mr. Speaker, I remember before I was selected, the member for Castries East spoke about a youth economy. And I remember being intrigued by the notion of a youth economy. And at that time, there were so many doubts. There were so many haters, as we say in the sports fraternity, sipping on haterade. They could not see what a youth economy could mean for St. Lucia. But Mr. Speaker, in our first two years, we've seen the impact. We feel the vibration. We feel our young entrepreneurs coming to the fore, coming towards this government and saying, I have a contribution to this economy. And I will be a part of the development of St. Lucia. And so fast forward, Mr. Speaker, we see the Minister of Tourism and his team putting together this tourism development bill to ensure that these same young people, these same young people can now be given the opportunity to gravitate towards the tourism industry and have immediate impact, Mr. Speaker. And as the Minister of Youth Development and Sports, I feel very encouraged that the incentives provided that for some reason was not seen by some individuals will definitely yield some big, big investments from our young people. And so, Mr. Speaker, I listened to some of the debates. I heard the member for Sufre indicating that Sufre was the heartbeat of St. Lucia's tourism industry. And as the member for Grosdile, it, 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 it had me questioning a little bit about what went behind that thinking. Because though tourists, oh, yeah. <laughs> though tourists go towards Sufre, the bulk of them, the bulk of the activities, the logistics, the entertainment, which is the heartbeat, the vibration, is at a place called Grizzly Friday Night. And Mr. Speaker, this is the area where any Caribbean country or any place in the world you talk about coming to St. Lucia, you must stop at the Grosley Friday night. And so, Mr. Speaker, this Minister of Tourism, along with his peers, who I know for a very long time, went through a torrid time with me for the first 18 months, simply because I knew that Grosley is the heartbeat of our tourism sector and a proposal for the development of our water shores our recreational center was on the table. But Mr. Speaker, I did not stay there and just decide as a minister, an MP, that I was just going to go and put up a structure with no approvals from DCA. I did not say to my family and to my friends that I'm going to allow you to manage this recreational area. I'm not a... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I knew very well that 
the constituents of Grosley voted for me to be a responsible member of parliament, Mr. Speaker. A responsible member of parliament. And so the ministry went through the painstaking process, Mr. Speaker, of ensuring that we had DC approval, planning approval, and all the approvals that we need. And now, Mr. Speaker, I can proudly say that the Grosley Recreational Area is sprouting very nicely, Mr. Speaker. And we're expecting our tourists to continue to enjoy the heartbeat of St. Lucia's tourism product, to recreate with our people in the community, and to chill, mingle, enjoy some food, enjoy our music, and enjoy what it is to be a Grosily, a je Grosily, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is the work of this current government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is well known that the population of Grosily, the entertainment in Grosily, and what Grosily really is, the entertainment hub, requires that tourists could really enjoy not just the sun and the sea, but enjoy my constituency, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, despite the fact that we had a tourism guru who likes to indicate that he was director of tourism at one point, and then became minister of tourism for five years, and then prime minister for another six years, by my calculation, more than 13, 14 years at the helm of decision making for tourism, Mr. Speaker, not one hotel was built in my constituency during his tenure, Mr. Speaker. Not one room, not one during his tenure, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I am indeed proud to stand here as a parliamentary rep for Grosley and get excerpts from an article written on the international, written on the international media about destination by Hyatt being constructed as we speak in the community of Kazabar, Mr. Speaker. Of course, Mr. Speaker, I am indeed proud that in that same article, they speak to this hotel being open by the end of 2024, Mr. Speaker. Less than two and a half years of government, Mr. Speaker, governance. <laughs> a proper hotel, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under this Minister of Tourism, we hear of the thrill and the prospects of Mount Pima, Mr. Speaker. Again, Mr. Speaker, activities that will spur economic growth, employment, and Mr. Speaker, provide other persons opportunities to come to the beautiful constituency of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, for many years, we spoke about how every sector affects other sectors, Mr. Speaker. And as somebody who grew up in Grosley, who played football in Massad and the Grosley playing field, and walked through the length of breath for that constituency, it was heartbreaking when we came in, and there was no proper Grosley police station. And you would say, why would I speak today about a Grosley police station, Mr. Speaker? When you have the tourism hub, the logistics, the economic activities happening in your constituency, and you have tourists, thousands and thousands of tourists in your community on a daily basis, attending Friday night, you know the importance of a Grosley police station, Mr. Speaker. And just as I said, Mr. Speaker, everything that this government does, there's synergy. There is reason. There is this symbiotic putting together of our agencies, Mr. Speaker. And so we saw the Honorable Prime Minister commence the construction of the Grosley police station, and we are certainly hoping that we can continue to have more and more policemen comforted by the amenities there to provide comfort and security to our tourists, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I am indeed thrilled by what we are doing here today, Mr. Speaker. We did some historic things today, Mr. Speaker, and the expectation by a number of my peers was that I was going to go deep into it. I did not, but for the member of Miku, Miku South, 
He could not resist the temptation of surreptitiously going back into what we did in terms of the removal of VAT on sports equipment. And so since he had the notes already in his book, he went on to mention Sufre and went on to lecture and indicate to me that he knows how to certify the Sufre Mini Stadium, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me, let me just hasten to say that, Mr. Speaker, Caroline Kazmi and Stephen Gustav, they made a very, they gave birth to a very humble young man. I always seek counsel, Mr. Speaker. And I always seek counsel from the experts. And some of my peers sometimes, even in the cabinet, wonder sometimes why this has not happened. But it simply is because I want to make sure that the advice that I'm given is coming from an area of authority, from intelligence, and it's coming from an individual that has had experience in doing the right thing, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Sufre Mini Stadium, it was built on the premise, one of the premises was that the majestic Peters in the back would breed some good sports tourism in the community. Mr. Speaker, I can't disagree with that. But we had a government that boasted of having a former national 400, 800, 200 meter sprinter. They boasted that in their cabinet, they had a former national cricketer. They boasted in the cabinet that the individual trying to unseat the current prime minister was a national netballer, national volleyballer, and of course, tennis player. They boasted that the one at that time from Denry South was a national sprinter. They boasted having the best former athletes in the cabinet, Mr. Speaker. Yet, with him, as a former national basketballer, as the leader. <laughs> as their leader, Mr. Speaker, they oversaw the worst sports Member, project in St. Lucia's Grizzly. history, Mr. Speaker. Member for Grizzly, um, you remind you that the bill before us is the tourism development bill. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, he opened the bill, he opened the door when he said that Sufre, the mini stadium, which is a sports tourism investment, was not being done properly, Mr. Speaker. Uh, member, if you're going to mention Sufre and the stadium, you're going to tie it into your presentation. Yes, Mr. Speaker. But remember that the bill before totally us agree, Mr. Speaker. is a tourism development bill. To Thank totally you. agree, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, when we have a venue that we are trying to attract tourists from all over the world, you must get certification, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, the worst ever sports infrastructure built, Mr. Speaker, had no certification. And today, under his watch, yes. and today, he claims that he has the answer for certifying the Super Mini Stadium so that we can bring in the tourists in a certified venue to enjoy our sportsmen and women, Mr. Speaker. Here are the facts, Mr. Speaker. In November last year, we had a representative from Mondo come to St. Lucia. Mondo is the global organization that lays tracks. Visited St. Lucia, and in their report, in their report, they indicated, one, the long jump and triple jump runways were built with a shortage in size. We had a national sprinter in the cabinet, Mr. Speaker. The Freud events are missing due to having synthetic grass in field, Mr. Speaker. Ah, the issues prevent the track from being WA2 certified, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and you come in today to try and vaguely people and lecture them. Lecture them, Mr. Speaker, and say to me, you can tell me how to get it certified when I, as a minister, have already engaged the stakeholders. So this is the options they gave to me, and I don't know if you want me to listen to him or them. Option one, leave everything as is and get compliance letter from WA for the oval only. So it means that we took a track, we took a field, 
where you could play football, cricket, you could have long jump, triple jump, short put, all events. Option one, leave everything as is and get the compliance letter from WA for the oval only, which means the only event we can have it that is certified for our tourists to come and enjoy would be the events running around the field, Mr. Speaker. Only the track. No long jump, no triple jump. They cannot come there and enjoy no short put, no discuss, none of those things. Option two, demolish the long jump and triple jump runways on the D area. Demolishing it may be costly. Consider building one new long jump and triple jump runway with correct measurements. With correct measurements, consider building it with correct measurements adjacent to the ovals. And if you visit any territory in the world, any territory in the world, the long jump and the triple jump is adjacent. Anywhere in the world. But we sat here for six years. We had the brilliant minds that can lecture us today. And not one of them said, you all are going the wrong way. The blind leading the blind. Mr. Speaker, it goes on to say, consider building one New York long jump and triple jump runway with correct measurements adjacent to the oval. Once you get the area square footage, we can give you estimates on the Mondo track surface. So that's the recommendation. Mr. Speaker, that's the only recommendation that makes sense to the people and to the athletes of St. Lucia. We already know that. We already got the recommendations, Mr. Speaker. We are into, almost into a new financial year. And we, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, will ensure that we do what we must to correct all his errors, all their errors, so that the tourists from London, from Canada, and the rest of the world can enjoy our facility, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, when I hear some of what is being said sometimes, Mr. Speaker, I choose to at times be quiet, but we must let our young people know what the vision is, Mr. Speaker. We have a bill right now, Mr. Speaker, that works to the benefit of a wide cross-section of St. Lucians. The Airbnb market, Mr. Speaker. The ordinary individual on the beach, Mr. Speaker. Those hoteliers who are up and coming, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, an interesting point was made earlier that our local businesses trust this government, Mr. Speaker. And we see Bay Gardens expanding, Mr. Speaker, ahead of this World Cup, expanding, Mr. Speaker. We've seen rooms being built all over the North, Mr. Speaker. They will be able to get the incentives under this bill to further develop their businesses, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, our biggest sports tourism activity this year will be the World Cup, the Cricket World Cup. And so I look forward to the continued synergy between the Ministry of Infrastructure, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Tourism, to ensure that when people come to our shores, they get the best product they've ever seen, Mr. Speaker. And we've delivered this before, and we'll continue to deliver it to them, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this government is on the right track. And so I must support this tourism enhancement bill. I thank you.